What is good? We're back. We got Big Co in the his ass. We're ready to roll. We got a we got a fun episode today for you. We're going to talk about kind of the art of the deal, how to pull things off, how to negotiate, how to maybe turn some teams around, and then at the end maybe talk a little bit how to deal with teams like FFPC or people that have roster cuts um, and how to deal with that when it's coming up. So right off the rip. We have a, a shared league. Uh, it's actually between the three of us, the the OG tripod, if you've been listening for a while, me, Jason, and, and Big Co. Um, and it's in with the Patreon leagues that we do inside the Patreon, another perk of being a Patreon member. If we start new leagues and there's, you know, looking for leagues, there's all sorts of good stuff going on there. But this is one of the older ones that we have. And it was a competitive team when we started. But, you know, when you're when you're try owning something you know it's a completely different ball game i mean me and big co have been co-owning stuff together for a while so we're pretty decent at it but even just when you're co-owning something teams can fall by the wayside because you're you're you know sometimes you don't have time to talk like you need to talk with somebody else or you're just thinking the other guy's gonna deal with it or you know yada yada you get three guys involved and it's like yeah man shoot everybody's got little kids businesses all, all sorts of shit whatever's going on in your life, um, you know, but that, this is a unique situation. There's probably not that many tribe, but we could talk about right. Well, you know, co-owning teams. And this was a good league. We, we, we made some runs. We had a good team. It was well built. And now we're at a point where last year we hit a point where it's like, Hey, we need to start tearing this down because we have Deontay Johnson and we have Amari Cooper well, and we have Terry was- McLaurin and we had, you know, we got a bunch of aging guys who are quickly losing value who nobody cares at all about, right? True. And like, yeah, until it's playoff time and then Amari right. Cooper's dropping 50 on you. So it's always, hey, we'll, we'll wait until these guys are scoring points to trade him. We can't really trade him. We had Mike Evans. Now we did unload him. And then, of course, the one, one guy we unload definitely was the probably the easiest to unload in season for, for a winner. And then the other struggle you face is we're in a time where, face it, everybody is telling you and you're talking about and you're seeing – how much fun it is to re everybody's rebuilding where everybody's in a perpetual state of rebuilding. And so, you know, that, that eliminates sometimes half the league no from, doubt. from who you can trade with. So you were always talking about make these trades, do this, do that. Well, well shit. Sometimes half the league doesn't want to trade these, you know, they don't want it. All they want is picks and the youngest guy available. So and you still have guys who are scoring fun. points. It is fun. It's fun. But you know, it's a bit, we've gotten to the point where it's a bit, when we first started playing this game, it wasn't like that. Mm-hmm. You know, there there might have been a team or two at a time trying to do that, but everybody else was, you know, I get it. Man. Trying to win that money. You don't want to be middling, but I've had a middling team for two years that comes out and wins a championship the next year. It, True. Happens. it and happens. You know, you don't want to be in that position. I get it. I understand what you're saying there, but you can get stuck in a situation, especially co-owning where, hey, we got these guys, good players, good point scorers, uh, but a guy like Amari quarterback gets hurt and then you know you don't really know what to go on and then it's 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 too late in the season when Flacco's in there crushing it and there's two guys still competing that might want him and and they don't want to you know they might not want to give up anything for him really or maybe they gave up everything already and then you have Terry McLaurin who's having a bad season because he ain't got a quarterback what else is new uh Jacoby Brissett comes in for one game he ruins somebody's day because they they played against him and, and they got beat by Terry McLaurin in the fourth quarter sure uh you know and Deontay Johnson perennially a, a pretty good player uh just again quarterback carousel last year so uh lots of good uh point scoring players on this team but not able to really get it done and so we kind of went into this season i, I called big co-op and i was like hey uh some, sometimes this is a good strategy hey man if, if you're co-owning a lot of teams let's focus on this team for mm-hmm. for a week or two and and get into it and then we'll, we'll both be getting an idea of who we want to trade where our values on them and see where the rest of the league is so we focused on this one big. I, I, I told Big Co, hey, just, you know, what was the uh, the Baja men this bitch? Let's let the dogs out. Just <laughs> fucking, you know, you said go make some moves. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so just, you know, nice little rant to get us started there. You talk us through some of these players that are losing value. Last year in the rookie draft, we were trying to trade away McLaurin or Mari Cooper or Mike Evans. We, I mean, we're literally offering those players for every pick in the second round. We get all the way back to maybe like 2-9, and we're finally getting some bites. But then at that point, we're like, all right, well, let's if we're only going to get 2-9, let's give the oldest one away, which was Mike Evans. And he ended up putting together a career year, which is obviously sometimes that's how it goes. Um, but what really happened with this team, Casey gave you the tripod stuff. We have three, three 
decision makers. So obviously we fall back on the two against one vote wins everything. But yes, yeah, so you throw it, you throw it in the back, throw it in the back seat because either Casey will handle it, Jay will handle it. I might look at it later if I get a an idea and these two guys don't like, you know. So yes, it goes. And if you're co co managing, that's what's going to happen. Your your buddy's going to disagree with you about something. Y'all are going to backseat it, and the league's going to suffer for sure, unless somebody says, okay. I'm going to take this league. I'm going to do mostly what I want. If there's something big, I'll tell you about it. You take that league. We're in this together. You do mostly what you want with that league. You tell me about it, kind of stuff like that. And But what really happened with this league is the year that we started this up, when we draft, I think this, this was an auction, and we bought, we came in quarterback heavy, and we bought Russell Wilson, and we bought um, Jared Goff. Jared Goff as a cheap one. That was our third one. And we bought Carson Wentz when he was coming back from his knee injury and he was supposed to be good. Mm -hmm. So the our team, we came in tight end heavy and we came in quarterback heavy. So it, when your team, when your when your league it says super flex tight end premium, it tells you what to, what positions you need to be good at. And Carson Wentz was supposed to be good, he wasn't. Russell Wilson's been on a downslide ever since we started the league and the best, as crazy as it sounds, the best quarterback we that we started with was Jared Goff. But right after we started with it was his down year with the Rams, and it looked so bad. And I was like, well, we might as well trade him now before he's nothing. Yeah. And look at Jared Goff now. But, he's, lap, he's lapping the field on right. Russell Wilson. Oh, sure. And Carson Wentz is out of the league. At the same time. Which is exactly what I thought Jared Goff was going to do five years ago when I was like, we need to trade him for anything we can get. We made the playoffs. Three or four years in a row because we have with, point scored. We had we, Travis because, Kelsey because we because we had every other point, every other position was firing, but not so, our quarterbacks. Couldn't couldn't quite get the first place, but we we. So anyway, that I just you just hey, you're gonna have you're gonna have sure. bad teams, you're gonna have good teams, and there's all kind of good excuses why. What are you gonna do about it? So Casey's, what are you gonna do? What about are you gonna do about it? So last year we wanted to tear it down. And we couldn't get anything really rocking and rolling. And we definitely got so many leagues that this one fell by the way. Even though we wanted, the desire was to tear it down and get started. We really wasn't pulling the trigger. And you're starting to look. You got Amari Cooper. And you're looking for that window to sell him. Well, Amari Cooper's window to sell him didn't pop off until the playoff play, uh, fantasy playoffs this year when he, Joe Flacco's in there starting. And then you've got a window of people that might buy him down to two or three people at right. most, you know. Um, and then, like you said, about all the people that might be rebuilding. So you don't have – like it's hard to find a good trade partner sometimes, and especially if you're trying to trade aging veterans. It's way harder than it sounds. It's way harder than the people on Twitter make it sound out to be. So basically what you end up having to do is overpower somebody to get a deal done. The art of the deal, when we start looking at trying to get a trade done here um, – we put a couple guys on the trade block a while back and you know this is a league with people that we know this is a league with buddies of ours on patreon this is especially this is being so old almost everybody in this league maybe one or two players have uh, owners or play you know uh, guys in the league have turned over but there's seven or eight og listeners here you know mm -hmm. there's a there's a handful of guys that's been with us since day one mm -hmm. so guys that know us inside and out and how we want to play it and guys that we've been helping and they've been helping us quite frankly and over the time where it was just straight patreon and then it went into discord and all that stuff we've been trading ideas for years live chatting each other and stuff um so it's hard to make trades in this kind of league for us because everybody in here knows what we want to do but so we put somebody on the trade block and we get some you know get some good back and forth going well, the biggest stud, you know, the big, the most marketable player we really had, um, tight and premium outside of uh, the younger ones. Like we had Puka, we got Puka, and we got smash that one, smash that one. We got Puka, we got Kyle. That Pitts. was uh, I put that in my model, and my model told mm -hmm. me Puka. So yeah, the model really <laughs> fired for us in that one. The model said, "Hey, I watched this guy play football. He's <clears> fucking good. Let's draft him." Yeah, and we drafted him, and that worked out. So we got Puka and we got we got a couple off limits players and and basically it was Puka, um, Jordan Addison, Isaiah Likely, too young to trade, too the upside's too good. Our team sucks. We don't anyway. really want to trade Pitts and plus probably not going to get the respect we need for him. Right? Yeah, you're not selling Pitts right now. Um, why would you do that? Um, and he's 23 years old. He's younger than half the rookies still. He's been in the league three years, gaining experience. Anyway, stock up Pitts. <laughs> um, so we got Puka and Likely and 
Pitts and Jordan Addison and a couple of running back shots and stuff like that. But we had Pittman and we had Deontay Johnson and Amari Cooper. So we had some stud looking wide receivers, but Tajay some of Spears. them. And, and so we put Pittman on the trade block and got got a little nibble. And yeah, started with Zay Flowers and Kendra Miller for Michael Pittman. Right. We got offered Zay Flowers and Kendra for Michael Pittman. And I was just like, man, I, I Pittman's our best, most marketable player that's over the age of 22. And I don't want to. And if we trade him, it's got to be it's got to be right. Substantial. So, uh, you know, not to uh, not to get you off your <laughs> uh, horse here moving. But that's a that's a good point right here is that if if we put this in a vacuum and you said, hey, let me see your rankings, my rankings with Pittman and Zay Flowers are pretty damn close. They're not they're not terribly far off. Zay Flowers is three years younger than Pittman, I think. And then you throw Kendra on top of there, who I like. So, hey, r- off the rip, it's like, all right, that's... that's it was that's, a fair that's, that's offer. Not, it's not a bad offer. It was but, a fair but, offer, which is very uh, hard, hard to get these days. Right. When you put somebody on the trade block to get a fair offer is tough. And our boy Alex has been with us for a long time. Uh, but when this is a team that needs to be in this position to rebuild and your best asset is you can't let them go for that. You got to do something different. You well, like it's, it's, it's just, you don't have very many options to, to reboot with. And, and me and me and me and my, my I completely agree with that. But my kind of stance on it was, I truly believe Pittman is an alpha and I love Zay flowers, but he's not, he, he may, stay in there with some PPR production, but I don't think week in and week out he is as he doesn't give you that probably the ceiling that Pittman can. And so I, that was kind of the stance I was taking on it and we needed, and I thought we needed to get a little bit more, but how are we going to package it up and, and make it worth somebody's while? So came back to him a little bit, actually gave him a shout out on the pod and was like, Hey man, we'll get back to you. Thanks for a fair offer. We'll get back to you. So we ended up, we sent Pittman and Terry, Terry McLaurin, because that was our next best guy that we wanted to trade was Terry. Whether it was Pittman, or we asked him Pittman or, or, or Deontay or Terry, and it seemed like Terry at first. It was Terry at first and ended up. So let me just get to the trade. Sure. Let me, let's get to the accepted part because it's, you know, the, we could talk about the offers. We ended up sending Pittman and Deontay Johnson and Tajay Spears. And we got back Chase Brown, Kendra Miller. So a couple stabs at running back. But we got back this year's 108 in a Superflex tight end premium and JSN. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. So that was the biggest part for me was uh, adding whatever it took to get right, basically buying low on JSN because we needed to take that gamble. And that's what he, he and I, and, and part of the art of the deal of this podcast right here was like Alex literally told, tells me in the ch- group chat, we're going back and forth and he's like, well, really it's hard for me to circle my, get my head circled around like, you know, Terry and Amari Cooper types of guys because he's been rebuilding, but man, he crushed it. I right, mean, right. He's got the most fun team in this league now. For sure. He rebuilt for a couple of years. He tore it down. He did it the right way. He got a ton of draft capital. He made some good picks. He traded back a ton. He tried, you know, so Alex's team is deep. I mean, I would trade our team for his team right now. Like his oh, team. Well, is, I mean, it's not even close. It's not even close. His team is so fun. But what I told him was, man, like, you take Pittman, take an absolute stud, JSN, I think he's fine, but you got a ton of draft capital, so you got more rookies coming in, and you got not enough starting wide receivers, but you got quarterbacks and tight ends. He's loaded at tight ends. He's loaded at quarterbacks. Got a couple good, a decent running back. Good receivers. Got Bijan. Right. Got good receivers, but nobody great. And so I was nobody like, nobody who is going to go in there week in, week out. I think outside of maybe Nico and maybe, but that is, he's going to count on scoring points every mm-hmm. single week. Right. To, to basically to try to go win. To win. And that's what I was saying. I was like, man, now you've done it. You've, you, you rebuilt. We are rebuilding. I was like, my, my team is going nowhere fast. And now yours is actually good and about to be great real quick. So that was like, he was like, man, you, you know, you're kind of right. I've been rebuilding so long. I can't even look at a 27 year old wide receiver. So, and not, not that Pittman is, but like the next stage of it, the Deontay Johnson part. So like Pittman comes in and jumps in his starting lineup right away. JSN's buried on his bench. Kendra Miller's buried on his bench. Chase Brown's buried on his bench. Spears. This was, this was after 
the right. um, addition of Pollard. Of Pollard. Pollard. So Spears, you know, stock down Spears, but you actually, you know, we've seen him catch 50 balls as a rookie, mm. et cetera, et cetera. And then Deontay Johnson has, you know, what he's definitely top five in targets the last three years, um, three to five years. So he's target hog, and now he's going to go to this is the narrative that is surrounding the Panthers right now, and everybody's saying it. And it's not not true. It is very true that they didn't they didn't have any real separators last year. And Bryce Young likes to throw to somebody kind of open. That's what he did at Bama. And now Deontay Johnson. That's what he does. He gets open. That's what you need for a young quarterback. That's his Deontay Johnson's role his is open to get score open. Is one of the best you know? open scores. So we know that De- Deontay Johnson is about to get targets. Are they going to get completed at a high level? I'm not sure. But Deontay Johnson doesn't even have to start for him. But. He's there, like but, but Pittman. Deontay Johnson is going to start for him and and be and, in his lineup. But Pitt, but but I mean, he's got some. But he's got. He his, has good his, players, but Deontay his, Johnson is going to be gobbling up PPR points week no in doubt. and week out. And and I and I hope that to be true because I got Deontay Johnson on a team that I really want to win with, and Deontay's going to be in my flex. But Deontay's going to probably be in his flex too. But he doesn't necessarily right. have to be. But he Pittman have will. To be. Right. But Pittman will. He traded in so for our team. So and you know that was a decent back and forth, some good negotiation. We went back and forth a couple times. Um, and basically, we sent the original send was Pittman and Terry for what we got. He just traded out Terry for Deontay and added Tajay Spears. And you know, here's the here's the mindset of of getting a deal done. He and I worked together a lot to get that deal put together. And then when he threw Tajay Spears in it, basically to make it worth his while, I'm telling Casey like we know Spears is good. And look at that offense surrounding the quarterback there. Right. Like the Titans, for everything you want to Every say. Every arrow is pointing up. Obviously, they gave Calvin Ridley Could way crash too much. crash and burn, but way, it looks good right now. Well, they gave Calvin Ridley way too much money guaranteed. Way too much guaranteed for that old of a receiver. But are they not doing ev- – and they brought – and then bring in Pollard too. Are they not doing ever they, everything they can to give Will Levis a chance? Spend it on offensive line. You better. But like – are they not doing everything they can to give that man That's a chance? What you got to do. How many times do we see Let's it? Let's see not, if we got the quarterback. Right. The great, great try by the right. by the Titans, and it may be that this happened for the Jags. Like they had to pay Kirk, Christian Kirk so much money because they were the Jags. Well, now the Titans have Will Levis, who's erratic as hell, likes to chuck it deep at a higher higher rate than any quarterback in the league. Maybe the wide receivers were like, I don't want to go there. Mm-hmm. And, and they got an old DeAndre Hopkins and an unproven Burks. And they're like, we got to get somebody in here to make sure this quarterback's good or not. So the joke may be on us to be just clowning Calvin Ridley's co- co- uh, contract. It actually might be high level theory on let's see if our quarterback's any good. Oh, yeah. I mean, so it's, it's, it's that's, sort of like the Jaguars overpaying for some receivers that's, in two or three that's what years. I just ago. said. That's exactly right. what I just said. So it, perfect. You know, so anyway, my. That tangent comes from we know Spears is good. They just added Pollard and stocked right. down for the moment. But one one of those guys gets hurt, the other one goes to the moon, and they could both be very startable in an RB two flex position. Sure. So anyway, the point of that was he throws in Spears, and there's that sense of like, well, maybe I should try to get a third round pick or something. And he having multiple thirds, it wouldn't hurt him all to give me three eleven back to make that trade go mm-hmm. through. But when you're rebuilding. Like Casey said, you only have so many people to trade with. And when you get a chance, you traded away a, you're trading away a stud in Pittman. But when you get a chance to buy low on JSN and get a decent draft pick, you can't be too quirky with it, right? Because cool. here's the thing. Like Alex is my boy. We've been going back. I, I, we've been, I've been talking and talking fantasy football and sending trades to Alex for five years. So I'm not saying that he would do this. And if he did... You can't be upset with anybody. What if I would have sent him a third round pick? It was late at night. What if he goes to bed and he wakes up in the morning? Right. Th- th- listen up, guys. Let's listen to this podcast because this has happened to me many a times before. So this is exactly why you just get a deal done sometimes if it's close enough. You don't have to beat somebody over the head and get an extra third round. I'm sure that's fun. And, you know, I love to negotiate with the next guy. I'm, 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 I enjoy that part, but I also enjoy getting a deal done. And I don't mind paying a little bit more than I think I need to or taking a little bit less than I think I could get. So when that trade com- comes back and it's done and I'm like, man, I could have got a third round pick. 
but I got the goal done. I succeeded in saying, all right, our best player that we could trade is Pittman. He's gone. We got a young receiver to take a gamble on. Maybe JSN doesn't do what we want him to do, but this time last year, he was st- his, his value was so high. And he actually only got like 20 less targets than Tyler Lockett last year. Right. They all three of those Seattle receivers had really good targets, and JSN caught sixty balls for yeah. six hundred so, something. You know, here's the thing with the like I, that was the first thing that I, I once when he offered uh, flowers, and we went back to a deal, and we start chatting back and forth, and and I'll, I'll get right back to your the the point of kind of what you were driving home, and that'll catapult us into the next little part of this is JSN for uh, for him is not valuable. A gamble. Because because he well he, he even if it's not really a gamble and he can just hey he can he he doesn't need to play JSN because he has enough but JSN doesn't really do that much for him moving forward he's he's ready to go win so somebody like Michael Pittman goes in the lineup and can help him win now Deontay Johnson can go in the help help him win now JSN a little bit of a gamble and you might have to wait a season for us we're okay. we want to wait a season right, we right. don't want to score points this year <laughs> right. if if JSN goes out there and crushes it great. But if he's just okay and isn't crushing it, but shows some of the shit that he showed us last year, and by the way, was the number one consensus by far dynasty wide receiver in the draft, which y'all have switched that shit up so quick, it doesn't even make sense. Y'all should go back to playing redraft. Um, But JSN is exactly what we needed on this team. A, a high-end asset that can turn into something awesome, but we don't he might not score. We don't need him to score points. We're not relying on him to scoring points. We'd, and then we'd be fine with a third or fourth year breakout. Right. So, we have 1-5 in this league and now B- Big Co fought to get this the 1-8 in here and then we took two escalators like I've been calling them, Chase Brown and Kendra Miller. I don't care if either one of those guys play a ton this year or Maybe Chase Brown comes right in and is playing over Zach Moss and crushing it. See ya. Mm-hmm. Maybe Kendra Miller comes in. Maybe they trade Alvin Kamara because they got a terrible contract. They eat some money and Kendra's in. See ya. Mm-hmm. You know, or we wait another year and Kendra Miller is on our team and he's got some more hype and we can either trade him or keep him. So we got two potential escalators. We gave there. up an escalator in Tajay Spears. For sure. Of that one that's more valuable because they've already seen more of it. You've seen more of Tajay Spears and he's more valuable than probably Kendra and Chase Brown put together. But we traded one to get two to give us two more shots. And like Casey's saying, we don't really even need Tajay Spears points in our lineup right now. Right. We don't. And that was one of the reasons that our tra- our team has been held down because between the three of us being unable to really make decisions, um, we've had like the one eight and one nine draft pick three years in a row because our team is good enough to not be bad, but not firing in the playoffs because you cannot, you're not going to go win in the playoffs without quarterbacks. Yeah, maybe two um, years because the year before. Well, year before that, we got in the playoffs by accident. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like we, you know, we had to take Kenny Pickett at like 110 or yeah. something. Like we, we at 18, 19, 110. Like we, we haven't been at the one two. Right, that's for sure. And here we are. We've our worst season yet, and we're at one five. Um, so now we pick up the one eight, and we have two twos. We have yeah. our two, and then we have the two. We have a two in the um. Part of it is getting the big part of it was pushing for the one eight to make sure we can keep that in there because now we have one five and we have one eight. So now we have, we're able to get younger or do whatever we need to do in that draft. We're getting multiple with picks able to do a bunch of different things. Right. And that's so. what I told Casey. And that's what I told Alex, my trade partner, where we were, he, we were going back and forth, all kind of different things were getting thrown around. But I was like, listen, I'm not trading Pittman without the one eight in the deal. Right. I wasn't going to trade Pittman to anybody in the league without a first round pick this year, just to give me another bullet in the gun to play with. Cause like you said, we had the one five. Now you give us the one eight and now we're moving around. Maybe we move up, maybe we move back. Maybe we just make those both picks, et cetera. So then that trade gets done and now we're like, all right, we're off and rolling. And so we go and we hit up Boz. Um, when I say hit up Boz, we send trades to five, six, seven teams, right. you know? So we're trading. And so that's one of those things like, here's what you do. If you, if you come real up quick, yeah, real go ahead, quick. jump I wanna, in. Jump I want to circle back to, the the Tajay Spears and not adding get it in the 311 because I don't think we hammered that home oh we were about to I don't think he hammered that home quite enough because I just I want to hammer one probably one more part of this thing before we go to the next trade before we go to the next one go ahead go ahead of of so Big Co's going back and forth Big Co is sending me stuff we're we're adding stuff I'm saying yeah like you know yeah and then so he's gone back and forth Big Co calls me it's like 11 o'clock he's like yo I think we got something. He's adding Tajay. I think we should just take it. 
because it's late and you and I are tired. We're about to go to bed. He's going to go to bed. And like you were about to say and before, just a minute ago, before I got off, we've both gone to sleep and somebody sleeps on it. And now we wake up and the whole fucking thing. We just worked two, three, four hours on all day long, going back and forth with somebody. Now they're like, ah, you know, I, I don't want tight or I don't want to trade uh, JSN or I, I, you know what? I really want exactly. one eight, you know? And it's, so now all of a sudden all the values on everything's are all fucked up and, and you and, start and, over and you start over and, and over what? Sure. Uh, you throw Tajay Spears in there and I'm all of a sudden I go, Ooh, yeah, we, no, 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 no. We need, we, you need to at least move our, you know, our three up to, you know, we need, we need to, we need to move up to three, three now, or we, we need, need to, to catch move, a bump. Off we, of Tajay yeah, we need to move in. to three, five to, to, to two twelve or something. We need, we need a bump there, but it's like, all right, we did all this work. We like where we're at. We like what we're getting. We're okay with it. Whether it's up to your standards, the listener here, and you, you think it's a dumb trade or whatever, this trade is has a lot of really good options for us to do a bunch of different things to kick this rebuild off. For our team, it's good for us. Um, and, and what are we gonna do? We're gonna we're gonna blow it over. Yeah, Tajay Spears could be awesome. Could be great. I love Taj. If you've been listening to us, I've been I I I'm the reason we got Tajay Spears on this fucking team. Right. I went to ba- I battled for Tajay Spears, but hey. What am I going to do? Am I going to say, hey, no, no way, man. I think Tajay is going to win out and he's going to crush and maybe he will. But instead, we're just going to go ahead and take this deal and not add anything else onto it. So we don't have to do any more back and forth. And he doesn't get cold feet and say, hey, let me sleep on it. And then the fucking whole thing's off. And we've been struggling for two years to really get this thing moving. And this is a big step in the right direction for us. And see, and and. In almost every position, this is really good talk for somebody who's rebuilding because almost every trade, the guy with the most viable piece in the trade has the power. We had Pittman, but he had the power. Alex had the power. First of all, he's got tons of draft picks and he's got options. Oh, you should have seen him last fucking draft. He was just he was walking killing us. around, strutting. No, you couldn't. You, and that, that's the other problem. You get somebody who's in the big rebuild. They got fucking five draft picks, six draft picks in the round. Now all of a sudden, you have one seven. You're like, oh, we might be able to. He's got seven of the picks. You can't move because right. he's got them. Right. Like, so sometimes if some, and he had them all. So he's just strutting around. He's not making any moves. He's like, why would I make any moves? I own this. I own two thirds of this round. I'm yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He was crushing. So even though we had Pittman, we didn't have the power because we're rebuilding and you don't have the power when you're rebuilding. Everybody knows that your team sucks. Mm-hmm. So everybody knows that you can't be there's They know what you're valuing. Yeah, they know what you need and they know what you don't need and you don't need people yeah, scoring no points. Power. We didn't we didn't we should have traded more away last year so this 1-5 could have been better. We didn't get enough trades done and trade enough points. We you know, we got Amari Cooper in there scoring us 50 randomly, etc. You know, so we had the better player in the deal. He had the draft pick that we needed just to kick, kick, get our ball rolling. And yeah, like you said, especially with like draft picks, man, they're just rookie fever is amazing. And it's literally undefeated. Rookie fever is undefeated. So if, and Alex is in Texas, so he's an hour or whatever behind us, it's 11 o'clock our time. I'm falling asleep. I'm telling Casey, I'm about to pass out. We're just gonna. I'm, we're gonna we're both talking like this. We we're got gonna. The, we got the deep voice got on. That like late night, deep, <laughs> sultry voice going. AM radio. <laughs> so it's like, well, let's just get this. Let's take the deal now, so we don't have to worry about if we even if we wake up tomorrow and and like we're gonna we can always trade Pittman to somebody. But just like Casey said, you put the time in, and everybody the value once the values get honed in and you get so close, you don't let a third round pick or some kind of little bump up ancillary throw things. it away because you know. You start over, every negotiation, every trade offer, somebody throws in, oh, well, I offered you this, and then now you throw in this guy. Now everything's up and down. And then, then next thing you know, the, the rebuttal has two random first-round picks in it. If this is in the nowhere. middle of the day, we might we might go for that. But it was the end of the day. And it's and if it's moving at a breakneck speed where you're going back and forth and he's throwing, and hey, yeah, maybe we could do that. But it's like, let's not, why? Why are we doing that right yeah, now? Let's you know? just, yeah, so we got it done. And I think... So, you know, there's probably people listening to this is like, I would have never given you that for Pittman and that deal. And there's probably people listening to that. It's like, I wouldn't have wanted to trade Pittman for that. So that's, that's, that's a good trade. Right. What do you, what do you, what are you doing? You want Kendra and Chase Brown and, 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 uh, JSN, JSN stinks. Like right. he wasn't great his first year. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, I don't look at it that way at all. I look at all those players as players that could, are, are, should only be going up in value. Kendra Miller played one game at the end of last year was awesome. Chase yeah. Brown. Nobody gave I, all it, it, it helps 
for me because I was as well as I was pounding the table for Tajay, I was also pounding the table for Jason Kendra. So I like both of those players, and that's sure. kind of how this works, right. you know. Um, and, and when you you know look at the ADP, regardless of what uh, you know, I guess it's probably not regardless of what Deontay Johnson does. I mean, he could go out there and be really really productive with Bryce Young right now, but he's probably next year he's twenty eight, you know. Yeah, he, then, could take, he, he could take. He might bump up the ADP. He could definitely bump up a little bit right now. But we <clears throat> kick this thing off. Target monster could bump up. Sure, but we kick this thing off saying he's been leading targets at least in the top third of of receivers. I'm sure in targets for a long, long, yeah, long time. Yeah, but since 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 Roethlisberger left, those targets weren't completions. Right, that but, was the problem. What I'm saying is is he's still been a pretty good fantasy player, and he right now he's he's a mid tenth. 10th round pick in super but i'm saying premium. but he hasn't been a really really good i'm just saying player. he'll be 28 and even if he does well he might move up a round or two and then he's probably going to fall back down which just because he's old but i'm just saying like yeah. for us personally we don't need that we don't need that at all like but, that's, you know, at a winning team yeah let me get right. a flex let me get a right. flex option for sure and i get it but i I'm just saying, like, if if Ben... I love the I'm drafting Deontay Johnson everywhere in a startup. I fucking yeah. love Deontay Johnson. Yeah. I'm just saying for a rebuilding team, for where we're at, the value, the value might get a, a slight bump up, but then it's just going to be on another slow decline down. Because he's not Keenan Allen. And Keenan Allen, at 31 years old, is going in the 10th, 12th round. You know right. what I'm saying? Right, right, he's right. Deontay Johnson. So when his shit starts to deflate, he's going to go down to the 13th round. And which is still fine for a winner. Which is 100%. Uh, and I'll be buying. I'll be buying Deontay Johnson until he waddles his dumb ass off the field and doesn't want to play anymore. But. Yeah, same. So, all right. So the art of the deal part of this comes back around, and basically every once in a while, when you, I might get on here and I'm like, man, I'm on trade fire right now. I mean, me and Casey made a couple trades this week in different leagues, and that right now I'm on trade fire myself because once it, once you find a deal that's acceptable to you to throw it out there. Like, so we ended up this next deal we traded with our boy, Darth Taylor, Tater, Sean Bosley, one of our real, deepest OGs. Real quick before you move on, shout out to Alex. He's, he's, uh, he's got a Ooh, YouTube channel that, that he just fired up dynasty football key. You go check that out. He's putting out some content. He's been with us for a while. He's an OG. Good dude. Dynasty uh, football key. I'm a, um, I'm almost, I'm a guest guest in there one time yeah so uh he we, we threw him on the patreon episode so shout out to him after all that talking back and forth great guy to deal with great great player uh fun really fun. good player he dominates our mocks and his team in this league that we're talking about is actually he's about to be the best team in the league and that's one of the things i told him too when i was trying to get his get his gears going on actually making a deal to try well, to win a good way to jump into the next thing so so i told alex i was like listen man not only did you just go and rebuild the crap out of this team and do a really, really good job, I said the guys that have been at the top for a couple of years, now they're going to start aging out and, and coming downhill. You're going uphill quick. So this is, you know, I'm obviously I'm selling Michael Pittman to him, but like the idea of like, hey, man, just you, you've you been buying 20-year-old people, right. prospects, but and, it's, and you've hit on a couple – and you've hit on a couple more, and now your team's good. Now you buy a twenty-six-year-old right. to help you well, win. We, we talk about this all the time. You go one way for a while, and then someday it has to flip, and you got to start selling those picks and doing other things. Yeah, but sometimes you have to point blank tell that person, "Hey, Bo, you're ready to win now. Take these fucking points, man." Yeah, and and it could be, you said it at one point, but but that that click and his mindset went, oh. I, you're right. I do. Yeah. I'm look at all these young guys I got, but we're, this is a beauty contest at this point. It's mm -hmm. a bunch of if, ands and maybes, and we like them and the dynasty value is good. And the, it's going to hold for a little while, but let me go, but let me go get some guys who I know can score points. point. Deontay <clears throat> Johnson isn't sexy, but he scores points in my lineup. Yeah. And we'll Pittman, have a, you know, has never ascended to that third, second round pick. He's always hovered around that fourth, fifth round pick. And maybe he never does, but he's a fucking rock solid player starter. and a yeah. rock solid pick in the fourth fifth round rock Super solid Flex startup so, premium and when i so, get crazy with it he, he's sometimes my first receiver right when i get so, crazy with it that's a good way to jump into here to, to the next guy who's been a perennial powerhouse in this league absolutely he has good point so i hit up darth tater put together a trade offer for him but he's got the 111 in the draft so here's what you do kids and we've i've been we've been preaching this for years if you feel good enough to send it to 110 111 you dang better well send it to 110, 19, and 18. Mm -hmm. Why would you send a trade to 111? Right. Well, and I want to go back. You, I don't know if you said it when you jumped back in, but once you make up your mind, 
that this is the trait. These are the pieces that I'm okay with letting go of. Mm -hmm. Now you execute. Hey, I, well, I, I found something with 111 here. Exactly. So now, now that you found those things, now you go 110, 19, 18. And here's what happened. I found a piece to send to 111 that I liked. I, and so we did not end up giving Alex the McLaren because he wanted Deontay Johnson. So, and I basically, so at this point you're like, oh, and by right. the way, guess who bought Mike Evans from us last year? Darth Tater. Nice. The guy who <laughs> the won guy, second the place. Only, the only old guy that we could get rid of who was the wrong old guy to get rid of. Yeah, exactly. And he took home and he goes and gets second place and he's won this before. So he's at least two out of three years is in the money. Um, and he might've been, I think he might, I think he's gotten paid every single year. He's, Tater's been close to it. crushing this league. Um, so, and at this point, you're like, all right, we traded Pittman, and that was the goal is to get rid of – we traded Pittman and Deontay. It's like I want I don't want anybody scoring points on my team that's not young because this a is nice a complete teardown. Right. We got jump started. Now I got to trade away Amari Cooper and McLaurin to somebody. And I don't get – like I mean, even last year, I mean, Cooper, you know, looked – more than fine with Watson, and then Flacco comes in. And he looks like a stud. I hate, Cooper's a freaking stud. He always has been. So when we couldn't even get anything good for him last year, and he's now he's going to be a year older. So what are we going to get for him now? So and and McLaurin is the habitually underrated best receiver in the league. Just like he's one of the most underrated receivers in the league. Like you said, we've been saying it all off season. Brissett came in there, came in there and fired him balls, and he looked good and. Now, you know, who knows what's going to happen with the quarterback position. So this is first thing I said when we started this, I had to overpower, right? In some leagues, you might be able to give McLaurin for the 111 straight up. But I offered McLaurin to the 111 straight up, and he says, I'm not sure about Terry, and I don't know enough about the rookies right now. And he gave me some – he ended up – he gave me some kind of – um he wanted JSN and maybe a second round pick or something. I don't remember, but we're not interested in trading away JSN for that price. Cause we need to gamble on his long term. So I literally took the same exact mindset and look, uh, Tater's got a really good team. He's been making money on this league. So I'm like, I literally told him the same thing. I told Alex, like, listen, my team's going nowhere fast. I understand worried about Terry, but he was a top 24 receiver last year in a horrible Washington situation. It can't get any worse than that. And it probably gets better. And if for some reason Redskins were to actually get the quarterback situation, right? Then McLaurin could easily be the wide receiver 10, 11, 12, 13. Now you got a back end wide receiver one. There's, you know, so like he's and it as a wide receiver, as the wide receiver 24, or 25 last year, that by definition is a high end flex spot. By definition, because if you got everybody right. got a wide receiver too, you know what I mean? Like 24 wide receivers in the first two wide receiver spots on everybody's team. If you got the next best one, that's the best flex in the business. Mm -hmm. Right now, you might have a one team with four good running backs. But the point is, McLaurin's flex worthy, flexual production all day long. Mm -hmm. And that's in a worst case scenario. Right. So McLaurin being, all, you know, 28 years old, take this guy and go win some money. Oh, but here's the kicker. I really need to sell him, and you don't kind of really want him that bad. So here, <laughs> right. take take Amari Cooper and Darren Waller too. You know, right. Darren Waller. So like, take all of this. Mm -hmm. Go keep winning money because I don't need to score any of these points. I don't want these guys on my team right now, and I don't want to. I I can't sell them all for second round picks. I'm not gonna give you Terry McLaurin for a second. I got to add well, to. We've tried a million times to sell them for second round picks. Nobody's giving you second round picks. Like you just can't even get them. We've tried. That's what I'm saying. Well, I mean, and you can't we couldn't even get a second round pick for Amari Cooper last year. Right. So, and we we could have we could have got 29, but we wanted to give you older. We wanted to give you the 31-year-old Mike Evans instead of 28-year-old Amari Cooper. Right. But the same idea, like we we're sure. not going to hold them to go back into the, so we, we packaged the whole thing up and got the best pick we could get, which was on a 111. By the way, when you send that pick to 111, you send it to 10 and 9 like we were talking about. But each time I even I threw Antonio Gibson in there for you know cuz you to go up a little. To, if you to go up a little, obviously the 110 guy that gets that draft pick or maybe, maybe I I think I added everybody on our team and threw it to 17. Mm -hmm. You know, he doesn't know that I'm offering less to 111, but it doesn't matter, you know. So like if I'm cap if I'm comfortable sending this package to 111, send it to 110. And then when I go look at one nine, now I'm two picks more. Here's Antonio Gibson as well. Here's this guy. Here's this guy, you know, obviously in our situation, 
it wouldn't be terrible to go into the season and see if Antonio Gibson gets a change of scenery and we can get more for him later. Sure. <clears throat> that being said, if I can get a better draft pick now, take a more see gamble. It. Take more gamble out of it. Sure. So that's what happened. And when I gave, when I put it, you know, I sent all that Darth Tater. He said, "Sure." Right. Um. And so we got that knocked out. So now we got one five, one eight, one eleven, multiple twos, and now we're rolling. We didn't get any players back from Tart Tater, but you know we got our young stud. Oh, we got Zach Ertz back. He gave him to it. I offered him Zach Ertz, and he uh, goes, oh, I don't even I'll, want Zach Ertz. Yeah, 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 I tried to give him Zach Ertz, and he yeah. said, you can keep him. A couple just of fours he's nice. back in there. Yeah, just because he was being nice. He was like, you know what, Joe, go try to trade Zach Ertz to somebody else. Thanks for this whole package for my 111. So like you said, we started this process with 1-5. We ended the process with 1-5, 1-8, and 111, and a couple fourths. So now we got uh, options. And so we now got we have three first-round picks, two JSN, and, a bu- and the two running backs who – at some point could easily be sold for twos in the season, if not even more if one of them breaks out. And they're, they're good escalators to have on the team with Chase and Kendra Miller. So nice. Th- those guys aren't going to be scoring points necessarily and could be really valuable to somebody if an injury happens or they come out and look really good right away, yada, yada, yada. But at what, what I really want to, again, hammer home with this one was is overpowering somebody losing kind of losing the value deal to get the deal done like i'm is, very is, comfortable doing is that what is um, is 111 worth <gasps> amari cooper and and terry mclaurin to a lot of people they'll probably go what are you doing why are you giving away those guys for 111 and then we even threw darren waller in there which maybe darren waller does nothing maybe darren waller catches 65 balls in one and a half premium and is a, a pretty startable player sure you maybe know? i mean Jer- if, if his hamstring holds up he could catch 60 balls in six games right so uh, my, the point is, is we're sitting here with these guys. We're trying to get rid of them, and it's just no success. It's been a year and a half, two years that we've been fighting this battle. We get rid of one here and there every once in a while, but we really need to get points off of our team because I'm not a guy who's just going to go. Uh, it's in the bylaws, actually, but you're, you're just not you're not going to have Terry and Amari Cooper on the fucking bench and not be playing him in the league. That's bullshit. Oh, no, not at uh, all. I don't I don't subscribe to that notion. And I know a lot of other people have a different versions of this, but that's the way I feel about it. And if it's in my league that I'm having, you're not you're not just benching good players because you want a better pick. Trade no, them. absolutely. Something and I, else. I won't I won't do it. Um, I'll put my best roster out. I will trade my good guys away, but I will not bench the, you know, best players on my right. team to get a better draft pick. I got right. more respect for the league than that. You guys, more white respect. knight. You guys, white knight guys on Twitter. We're white knight in I got, dynasty leagues. You ain't yeah. starting. You, you. I got more respect for myself than that, man. I'm not doing that shit. I will trade away right. my guys. I'll trade away everybody that I want that I don't want to be scoring points. But so I'm not the idea them. is here again is just overwhelming somebody with even if it's if you feel like you're getting underpaid, we still got a first round pick. We're still now at 111. We still now have three first round picks. We have. We got well, options. We got options. We're able to move around and do different things. And and we magnified our pick next year because we got rid of Terry, Pittman, and Cooper, and Waller. We got rid of potential score point scorers. Right. I mean, yeah, and that whole draft, yeah, we're going to have, we're going to bring in rookies and we got back JSN. Like you said, if JSN blows up, JSN blows up, good for us. But what we didn't want to do is sit around and – let those guys continue to age Every and keep single, us and just, keep us at one eight in the rookie draft. Right. We don't need to be at one eight in just the rookie like draft. Just like I was saying with Deontay, and it's even more true because if Amari and Terry are a year and two years older than him. Each year that they go by, they're a year older, and nobody cares about them. And you might be able to find one guy in the season who might except pay for up the for smart him. winners, but they're hard right. to find. It's, make it's, trades. It's hard to find, and and maybe they've already moved all their twos or whatever because they are that kind of player. And that's what they do. So sometimes it's really hard to get that done. So what we did was, is we went in there, we found a guy who would be responsive, right? You, you, he's respond. You sent those trades to ten and not still out there. If 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 you hadn't, if they hadn't done the trade, they had to get withdrawn because those guys weren't responding. So you be proactive. You find the guy who's responding. You're getting a dialogue rolling, and then you just overpower them with guys to get the deal done, to get yourself in a better position. And yeah, it might sting a little bit pride-wise because you didn't win the deal. 
It's okay, man. You don't it's, have to come out on top of every deal going, oh, I'm look at this. You're worried about what the fuck they're saying in the league chat about you. It's like, oh, I didn't drag my you know balls across this guy when I got this deal. Like, it's all right, man. In a year, this this deal feels really good for us because the you know, like you said, to, to wrap up my spiel here, is you also escalated your next year's pick with this too. Hopefully we're gonna be it's gonna be tough for us not to get the one one or one two going into next year. Yeah, exactly. Well, we got to play it like that. And then, you know, you also take care of trade partners along the way. You know, I'm right. not trying to say give right. away stuff, but, you know. Uh, building relationships. You're building relationships, giving, giving fair deals. He's a reasonable deals. guy, you know. <laughs> Be reasonable. Right. He's he's easy to deal with. A He doesn't make everything have to go. You know those red asses in the league who is if it ain't exactly down they'll they will that fourth round pick will ruin the deal for that guy. I've dealt with we've dealt with so many of those guys where you're just like, hey man, can I just get four one here from you? And he's like, no, nah, no way, man. And I'm like, I don't, I really don't understand how I, how I can't just get four one from you here. Yeah, this doesn't make any sense. Why is this? Why are you being? And it's just they're so steadfast in this exact value on this exact guy, and you're like this. I, what are we doing here? So it's nice to build those relationships. Keep tabs on those other guys who you know are, are very stern. And, and But those guys aren't doing a lot of deals. Uh, they're, they're not doing deals unless they are, feel like they absolutely won the deal. Uh, yeah. And, and here, you those know. guys are going to probably most likely, unless they're really, really, really sharp players and drafted a good team, going to stay perpetually right outside the winner circle. Sure. I mean, you know, and Jay Wayne thinks he likes to try to give me a hard time because I, I'll – haggle a deal but he's also not keeping track of the ones that you lose or, or uh, you know he's he's keeping track of that first one that you come across that's dozens, like oh my god i can't even believe dozens that. and dozens of bad trades in my roster on, on my on my resume dude that's the thing like and i've said this before i'll say so it, like, many i just talked about one in the last show like I, I, it happens i i play dynasty for the trades it's fun it's right. part of my life and it's, people it's in my people blood play it different i buy cars cheap i sell them a little higher like i i play the stock market like the wheel I play, and deal. I, i'm a wheeler and dealer man i was selling candy in middle school but this is what it's in my blood and i'm gonna lose i'm gonna lose some trades because i'm not going to not trade because i'm scared to lose i've there's plenty of trades where six months later i look like a genius two months later Two, two years after that, it's a terrible dynasty trade. That's the beauty of dynasty. It's not over after the season. Right. You know? That's why vetoes don't make sense. It's, it's, it's so such a beautiful thing to make these trades and then see if it works out. And there's some that you're like, oh, yeah, that I crushed that. If you sell a player at the, at the ultimate peak, remember years ago when, um, what's the dude for the Steelers caught five to, four or five touchdowns his rookie Chase year? Chase Claypool. 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 He gets four touchdowns his rookie year, maybe third or fourth season of the game. Of uh, game of the season, I came in here. That's when I was still here every week. I came in here. I was like, trade Trace Chase Claypool right now. He'll never have a better game. And he spent that whole season being like everybody's favorite new receiver. And didn't uh, you trade three first round picks or something crazy? Like he was. Damn, I got him in a deal. I traded Alvin Kamara. Alvin Kamara. You traded a crazy amount for. I sold Alvin Kamara a year early, and I got a bunch of first round picks. And Claypool was part of that trade that i got in in our home league from kevin well, i got claypool and a bunch of first for kamara and um and then claypool that was definitely two or three years before kamara fell off but it, i mean it wasn't last year yeah, but yeah, i mean yeah. i got I, yeah. I got a ton for him. Yeah. oh yeah way more than i was going to get the next year yeah and sure. way way more than i was going to get the next year um anyway so clay i did get claypool in that league in that year um in a deal that he was a good, good piece of that deal. And he goes down and becomes yeah. nothing. Um, right. well, but real, that's the point. Right. You know, real quick, we need to, we need to wrap this up because we've again been going on for too long, but I just wanted to, we, we it's FFPC cut downs. Got it's, it. it's, uh, we've gotten some questions on the discord about people having leagues that have cut downs, which isn't my favorite. I don't like FFPC because of that reason, but we play an FFPC because you have to, because there's, if you're, if you're a degenerate and you're into it, this is what you got. And these leagues don't fold. And they take a rake and it stinks, but and and I I I want thirty man rosters, but they cut down, so it is what it is. You got to deal, you got to pay, you got to deal with what they have going on because they it, it works and it's around. And once you run out of friends and other, you know, I don't want to play with a bunch of random dudes on Twitter for two hundred fifty five hundred dollars because I don't know if that league's going to be there in three years. Right. I know FFPC will be there <coughs> in you know a couple of years. So 
all that comes around. We, the, uh, this spawned because the, the deadline's coming up and uh, a patron or two have asked about some cut downs and what to do and how to handle it. And it's, it's, it's interesting because, you know, you can catch a deal on either side of this thing right now, right? And FFPC isn't, well, any of these cut downs are going to be interesting because your third, fourth, and if it goes deeper, fifth, sixth round picks are a little bit more valuable because you're only keeping 16 guys in an FFPC. You keep a kicker in a defense. Sure. Right. So all of a sudden, you know, we've caught plenty of guys in the fourth, fifth, sixth rounds of, of free agent. Like Tyler Lockett would be an example of somebody that, you know, was all every FFPC we're, league we're in. You could buy Tyler Lockett right now for a fifth, sixth round pick. If you're a winning team, that's great. But you have to have a spot for Tyler Lockett to bring right. him in there. So right, that's right. why people are cutting him. Nobody wants to cut him. Right. So. I just wanted to talk real quick and, and we'll try to keep this to a couple minutes of just kind of the idea behind the plus and the minus of, of the cuts. Well, and, and so we years ago when we were more hyper-focused on less teams, now we have more teams and focus drains and kids do that to you. But what you would do is what you're supposed to do is like, all right, I got my 16 guys, but I really got 18 guys. I, I don't want to cut these two guys or whatever. So, you either a go up your depth chart and you go get somebody good, but you know, I'm going to sell this guy before he gets another year older, et cetera, et cetera. And like, I'm going to sell this guy. He's good. And I'm going to get, I'm going to try to go get a first round pick. So I don't have to cut another guy on my bench because I really like these guys. Some, I got a bunch of Dontavian wicks down here, right. you know, and I don't want to sell and I don't want to try, I don't want to cut that guy in FFPC. But like you said, if you're cutting down to 16 kicker defense, then that's 14 players and 10 in your starting lineup. So, that's including the defense and kicker. So you got six players on your bench you can hold. So you got your Dontavian Wicks types players and stuff like that. So you're like, I don't want to trade this guy or cut these guys, the kind of guys. So what you do is you look for, and especially there's the teams that are cut down to 16, seven or eight weeks in advance. Don't be that guy. Yeah. Especially, I mean, these there's teams that cut down before free agency. Right. And stuff. Don't do that. What are you doing? Right. You know, there's player values go same up. guy who's typing on his keyboard when you're in the fucking draft come on man come yeah. on what, so don't cut your guy i mean you can cut the guys on to you know to, you can cut your guys on thursday when cut downs on sunday night you don't have to forget and go to sleep and right. the teams and they and the, have to send ffpc a, and email. have to hey let me get hey, that man. guy back let me get that guy back i've definitely done that before i i wouldn't have cut that guy sorry i fell asleep on you i definitely i usually wait till the night till the night of just in case anything happens but so you go find a team that's got their teams already cut or there's teams got 18, 20 guys. Off your dresser and your daughter's not <laughs> seen it a thousand times. <laughs> so you just say, Hey, I got this guy right here. He's better than your last guy. That's, that's, that's the easiest way to get something done is, and, and, and I, there's people that send messages to the league and they're like, all right, I'll send you uh, this guy is available for a third. This guy's available for a fourth. This guy's available for a fifth. This guy's available for six. And sometimes that happens immediately a couple years ago, I came in here and was like, dude, I just got Mike Williams for a fourth round pick in FFPC. The message went out. I saw it on my email and bang, I sent a fourth. I got Mike Williams the next year. He was crushing mm -hmm. the year before that. He got hurt his value, you know, and Mike Williams does what he does. He crushes and he gets hurt. He crushes and he gets hurt. But that's the kind of the, what I'm talking about. So what I've always done is find, I'll go look for somebody and I'll count their players. And I'm like, all right, well, this dude's got his, his 16 or whatever. He's got 13 good players. He's got three throwaways anyway. So I'm going to send him my Tyler Lockett. That I, I got 17. Tyler Lockett's my 18th guy. I'm not cutting Tyler Lockett. So I'll go in there and I'll say, hey, here, I'll give me a fifth round pick for Tyler Lockett. And he's like, oh, I don't want Tyler Lockett. And I'm like, well, you're over here. You got Joe Schmo on the bench. And that guy right there is, you know, not to be talking junk about your bench, but on your bench, your 16th guy, 16th guy is like a 25th round startup pick. And I got Tyler Lockett. He's a, 13th round startup pick or fifth, yeah. a 17 whatever he is but I, there's seven rounds of value here for you just give me a fifth form you know and a lot of times you can just talk somebody into it now you're not going to talk somebody into buying somebody and replacing them replacing a dontavian wick somebody like that who's hot right, right now right right but like you could be like hey man you got muhammad sanu on your bench and you can take this guy and bump muhammad sanu's a cut right right and, I, and his name popped up in my head because years ago on FFPC, I got a fourth round pick for Muhammad Sanu doing this exact same thing because he was kind of hot. He was making those making points on the Falcons with Matty Ryan and Kyle Shanahan was the coordinator. And 
Muhammad Sanu was actually startable, and I sold him and I got a fourth round pick in cuts when I was going to cut him. And th- that's so you just got to go find somebody and talk to it and say, hey, man, this guy is better than your last guy, and it's just a value thing. And even if you got a seventh round pick, like, you know, you might, right. you last year in FFPC, you and I got Gus Edwards in the seventh round. Mm-hmm. You know, like, so like you said, because if you cut down all those picks, all by the time you get to the seventh round of FFP, FFPC rookie drafts, all of the rookies are gone. Right. You know, nine out of nine, nine out of twelve guys are going to just keep drafting rookies instead of going after the guys who were retreads, but could actually Potentially offer value. Startable. And, and yeah, and there's plenty of guys that you draft in the fifth, sixth, and seventh round of FFPC that you Don't throw even make back it to week one. You throw them back, but you exactly, basically, you the Gus Edwards and those kind of guys were like, well, let's take let's see if he sticks and he's on the Ravens again. You know, yeah. or et cetera, you know, et cetera. You pick up this guy was like, well, let's see if this guy's here or on this team or he maybe he this person gets hurt. Uh, we, there's plenty of time because FFPC is in May. Right. So you're like, all right, well, let's take this decent old running back that's a backup now. And if this guy gets hurt and it's in front of him in training camp, then now we got to start yeah. running back. Like, you know who I'm going to be drafting the shit out of in the seventh round of FFPC? Probably who? Ezekiel Elliott. Because he's going to go somewhere good pick. And, and probably hold out until he gets a decent spot and then they get an injury or anything happens. Zeke was still decent last year. Mm-hmm. You know, it just he was on a shitty team in a bad situation. Uh, so like that, that just an example of an older running back who, who could have some some value there. So let me do the opposite before we get out of here. Right. The other day I'm sitting there and I'm counting my guys on one on my team that you and I are not together on. And I'm like, oh, crap, I got an extra spot. I only got five guys on my bench that I really care about. And so I sent in a league, I sent a message to the league and this is a not, I'm, I'm never in this position. I always have too many good guys on my mm. bench. And I'm like, this is, this is all, this is a brand new experiment. So I threw out, instead of going hunting, I got less time on my hands. I threw out the group chat message and said, Hey, I got an extra spot and I've seen it done. If you're an FFPC league and you're doing it for any amount of time, the good teams will do this. And they'll say, hey, I got an extra spot of cuts. Send me somebody, you know. And so what I did, I got multiple first-round picks in this league and stuff. So I said, you can send me somebody good you want to cash out on. I got first-round picks, and I got seventh-round picks and everything yeah. in between. So you can send me somebody. You can send me your your cut guy that's better than my guy, or you can send me somebody good. And, I mean, I dude, I had six trade offers in no time. Right. It was awesome. So that was a, a really good experiment. And we still got three days before the cut down. And, and there was a couple of deals that I didn't. One deal that I got was a, tw- a 2020, uh, a next year's third, not even this year's rookie draft, a next year's third for, um, uh, dang it, the wide receiver that just went to the Browns. He was on the Broncos. Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy. I got a third round pick next year offered for Jerry Judy to for me to get Jerry Judy. And uh, I was thinking hard on it. I couldn't pull the trigger, and somebody else got it. Somebody else got Jerry Judy for the third. Yeah. Um, well, that, that's a good. But that was a that's a good. I mean, that's a good example right. of how to play the cut downs. Whether or not, if you have too many, go hunting and tell people how, in a very respectful way, how this is a good. You know, give me a fifth round pick for this guy because he's that much he's better, better than, than your sixteen. And the other way around, if you could handle one more guy, telling everybody in the league to send you what they want to get rid of, whether right. they're cashing out of somebody good. Or they just got a cut that that's too good to cut. And and this is also a really good example of it's okay to lose value on a guy who you value higher, but he's your 17th. So you're going to have to cut somebody anyway. So Mm -hmm. it's like, all right, well, this guy's the third round pick all day. But if I I'll take a fourth or a fifth for him, because if not, I'm going to have to throw him back. Now, maybe I could redraft him, but maybe I can't. Like, and, all right. and so you have to sometimes right. you ha- it's okay, sometimes you have to take a loss of value to net a gain, even though it's a it's a it's not what you want it to be, and it sucks. And you're like, in no way, shape, or form is this correct value. But what the, what am I going to do? Step it up one more level. I know we got to go one more level. Instead, it, yes, or you take that and go to the two for one trade above that guy, so you didn't have to cut the bottom guy. Right. So like we recently did, and, and we recently gave away. Romeo Dubs and Gus Edwards for Dalton Schultz and tight end premium. We needed to start in tight end bad and trading those two players away kept us from having to cut right. the bottom guy because we were over by one and we were trying to trade away the bottom guy whose name is, I don't, I don't remember now. Ro- Romeo Dubs was not in this conversation. We were not trying to cut Romeo Dubs and we were not trying to sell him cheap, but we used him to go get Dalton Schultz. 
And 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 that being said, well, we initially sent Gus for Schultz just to see if what we could do. Well, we were trying to get a quarterback in the package, and he ends up saying he likes Gus Edwards, and we were like, all right, well, we like Dalton Schultz. So in this big package that involved quarterbacks in a super that flex didn't league, work out. that didn't work out, we figured out that he was at he wanted Gus Edwards, right? And so he tells me he likes Dalton Schultz more than Gus Edwards, and part of a reason why he couldn't take a trade. So then I was like, all right, Casey, well, we got to add to Gus Edwards to go get Dalton Schultz, and then. We send him Dalton Schultz and I mean Gus Edwards and somebody for Dalton Schultz and he comes back with Romeo Dubs, which was an obvious step up. And what we should have done was exactly what I was talking about earlier, which was, hey, well now that you want Romeo Dubs, Dubs and right Dalton Schultz are close in ADP. Let me get something more. Let me get a third round pick or a fourth or fifth round pick in addition to that so I can give you Dubs and Gus Edwards. But we just took the deal because we needed a starting on tight end. He just got his contract with CJ Stroud. And that getting that deal done, if we would have tried to finesse it and he says no and decides to go another direction, et cetera, et cetera, which is always the case. If you have a deal, you will accept. A lot of times you should accept it. Right. Um, if you, if you, if you're going to lose the deal and it's going to hurt your feelings to not get the deal done, don't finagle over the third, which is exactly why I took Schultz. But then I was like, Casey, maybe we could have, since he threw, right. you know, maybe we could have got that extra you, you bump. You could have, but it's not, it's not worth it right was this it worth minute it? to, yeah. to, to blow And I it. was working. We, I was, were, we weren't trying to cut Mooney or Curtis Samuel was who we were kind of trying to hang on to there um, yeah. in, that, in that scenario. I didn't want to get rid of Dubs, but we really needed the tight end. But now, now we're able to do that because – Instead of having to take lesser for for a trade or something, but we, you know, the other move is the two for one, like you're talking about, which we were able to do. And and you know, look, some people are like, I would never traded, I would never trade Dal- Romeo Dubs for Dalton Schultz straight up. And that that's the next part of that. I really wanted to say it. So what I should have done was when he asked for Dubs, I should have just taken Gus Edwards out Dubs of the wasn't deal in the initial trade. Dubs so once had he nothing. comes back and shows us that he likes Dubs, typically you go, hey. If you want, oh, oh you we, like we, dubs. We, we like dubs this much. I love dubs, right. so you need to give me Dalton Schultz for dubs straight up. That's what I should have done. It was in the middle of the day. I was working. I mean, I got, I got a tree service. There's trees flying everywhere. It's loud. I mean, well, and we're we're trying to get something done, so we can, get so done. we don't have to mess with these cuts anymore, and, and we don't have to cut a guy or, or or send any more deals. So, you know, younger guy who's younger us at 22, 24 doing this, we probably would have. Made a move and then hey, we got to go make another transaction now. But that's fine. Uh, but, yeah, we could have traded Gus to somebody else, or we could have made another move. I probably should have sent Romeo. But that here's the deal: we made it. We got to get. We got a deal done, and probably made a mistake at the same time. Right. We probably should have sent Romeo Dubs for Dalton Schultz straight up to see where his head was at on Romeo. Right. He might have gotten that trade and, and sent us that trade, and we accepted it and laughed all the way to the bank. That's fine. We said to Ching ourselves because we needed a tight end bad. And now that Dalton right. Schultz has and signed maybe, up maybe with Stroud, we're going, fine. Hey, I don't. I, Dalton Schultz stinks. That's a you problem. Like Dalton Schultz is, it was really solid last year in tight end premium for most of the year. So, oh yeah, and when they really, I mean, for most of the year, if you look at the game log, as Stroud got together, you know, he he started off as a rookie quarterback, but it didn't take him long to not look like a rookie. Right. And then as so, things went and. Uh, you know. And, and Ro- Romeo is, you know, I like Romeo, and I, Romeo and Wicks are guys that I'm drafting in startups. But it's Packers on a crowded thing. We don't know who it's going to be, so it's a little easier for us to say, hey, we can get rid of Romeo in this scenario. Right. Well, you got Jordan Love. Stock up Jordan Love. It's what I said about right. uh, the Eagles court, Jalen Hurts, Jalen Hurts, two years ago when they got A.J. Brown and, and, and Goddard and Devonta Smith and, you know, get yeah. – um, the running back that came over from Swift. I mean, I was like, well, I don't know who's going to get the ball. Stock up quarterback. Stock up quarterback. Jordan Love's got two tight ends he can throw the ball to. And all those Christian receivers. Watson and Wicks and Reed and Dubs. And, you right. Know. And, and Bo. And yeah. so, I mean, he's got five wide receivers and two tight ends. Right. So, like, I don't know who's going to get the and ball. And now he's got Josh Jacobs. And Josh Jacobs. Stock so. up Packers offense. We could go on and on, which we already have too long. Jason's going to be mad about all these episodes. So, okay. shout out to him for editing these. Um... Hope you enjoyed it. We appreciate you. Uh, Like, subscribe, comment. Hit us on the Discord. All that jazz. We appreciate you. We will catch you next time. Peace.